All right, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. You are at the Middlesex County Virtual College Fair. So thank you all so, so much for attending. I know we're going to have uh, some of our attendees coming in uh, pretty soon here, but I do want to make sure that we have our um, housekeeping items set. So please make sure to uh, listen up. Okay, we're super excited to have you here, but we want to make sure this is an enjoyable session for all of us. So you may have some questions, right? We have some great uh, institutions here at this session. Brookdale Community College first, Rensselaer next, University of Southern Florida, Vermont Technical College, Harrisburg University, and Bloomfield College uh, as our last institution. But you may have some questions for them. So my name is Sabelle Rasim. I'm your facilitator, and I'm going to tell you how you can uh, get those questions answered. Down at the bottom of your screen, my attendees, you have a Q&A button. The chat is disabled. You may have some institutions that will be able to uh, send you some links or contact info through the chat, but you cannot have your questions in that chat. You will use your question and a button down at the bottom of your screen to put in any questions and our reps will answer those questions for you. I do ask that if you do have a, questions, uh, a question for any institution, please name the institution uh, before you answer that question. So we all know where that question is uh, going to, okay? Also, uh, we are in a webinar format, so please understand that you are going to be, uh, you know, your camera is going to be off and your microphone is also turned off as well. So just uh, understand that, again, we cannot see you, but you'll be able to see us. So you're muted and uh, the panelists cannot see or hear you. Also, we'll have some more sessions that are offered, so please make sure that you check out the other college presentations that are offered and sign up for potentially the next time slot. And last but not least, the recording will be available. So all sessions are being recorded and will be available on the same page that you registered. Again, my name is Sabelle. I'll be here to just make sure everything is going well. Other than that, uh, let's queue up Brookdale Community College and uh, then Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute afterwards. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much. Um, welcome, everyone. My name is Birgit Mondesir. I am an interim associate director in the Office of Admissions at Brookdale Community College. And at this time, I'd like to introduce my colleague, uh, Kristen Worthley, who is an associate director at Brookdale Community College. Kristen? Hello, everyone. Welcome. It's so nice to have you all here today. Like uh, Birgit said, my name is Kristen Worthley. I'm the associate director of admissions. And let's get us started. Um, so Brookdale is our community college located in beautiful Monmouth County, New Jersey. We're about halfway um, down the, the Garden State Parkway. Uh, we are an open enrollment institution serving more than 10,000 students every year. Um, and as an open enrollment institution, this means that we are able to accept everyone um, and meet you where you are academically. We love working with students from all uh, backgrounds and helping you get to where your goal is. Um, we say at Brookdale, here we'll get you there. Um, and we mean it. We want to help you get to wherever there is for you. Um, we offer affordable opportunities to help you reach your goals. And I hope tonight we can um, highlight some of those for you in this brief time. Um, so here is really wherever you are. Um, this is a map of Monmouth County and you can see um, our various locations. We have a location, our main campus is located in Lingcroft. Um, we also have locations in Neptune, Long Branch, Hazlitt, Wall, Freehold, and of course these days online. Um, we've always traditionally offered about eight degrees fully online, um, but these days we are offering significantly more than that um, remotely to our students. Um, speaking of the programs that we offer, we um, specialize not only in transfer opportunities, so these are degrees, the associate degrees that are geared specifically to lead students to their bachelor's degree. We have over 50 program opportunities and a ton of um, transfer opportunities, which we'll be highlighting in just a minute. Um, but we also can help students towards their careers. Um, so we have degree programs and certificate programs that prepare students for entry into their career or their industry. We have over 40 program opportunities for students to choose from, um, such as automotive, culinary. Our culinary program is ranked within the top 10 um, nationally. We have our nursing program and our respiratory therapy program, certainly programs that are in high demand these days. Um, and our cybersecurity program is, our, we have been designated a national center of academic excellence in cyber defense education. I mean, we're super proud of that. So I'm going to turn this back over to Birgit, who's gonna to talk to you a bit more about the transfer opportunities and more about Brookdale. Oh, we do understand that being a two-year institution, 
we have an obligation to prepare you for transfers. So once you've graduated from Brookdale with your associate's degree, we do provide transfer partnership opportunities with those universities that you see. Georgian Court, it's located in our Hazlitt campus, uh, New Jersey City University, which is located in our Wall campus, and Rutgers University, which is on our Lincroft campus. What these uh, partnerships afford you is the opportunity to actually come to Brookdale for two years, graduate with your associates, and then seamlessly transfer to these particular institutions, and then thereafter earn your mass, your bachelor's, or if you choose to go on a master's degree um, in another four year, in another two years. Um, so what it means is that you have the ability to transfer seamlessly once you've graduated from Brookdale into these institutions and align your program so that you're not wasting credits or time. It's also beneficial because it also eliminates the need for room and board as well as maybe travel time. So it's a win-win. We also have a trans, um, partnership uh, trans agreements that actually allow us to even extend that further. Um, our articulation agreements will allow you in this particular instance, Georgian Court, which is one of our universities, can actually allow for you to be at Brookdale for three years and then with just one more year in their particular institution earn your um, bachelor's degree. So what that means normally when in, we are talking about transfer um, partnerships, you will then in four years have earned a two-year degree from Brookdale and in another two years you would have earned a bachelor's degree from that particular institution, affording you everything that uh, students that are matriculating in that institution has at their um, fingertips. As well, we also have, um, for those of you who may be interested in attending um, universities that are not part of our partnerships, we have articulation agreements. These agreements can then be aligned via the tool on uh, NewJerseyTransfers.org. Um, in which you can then drop in your area of study from Brookdale and see exactly how it compares to the prerequisites of that particular institution. So any way you look at it, we can provide a four-year experience for you after graduation uh, from Brookdale Community College. Next slide. And here are affordability. Um, this is the best part of what I think community colleges offer. As you can see on the screen, we literally have um, the comparison between a two-year institution, in particular Brookdale, which offers a little over $5,000 in an annual uh, tuition and fee program. Um, and you can see how that compares. Um, it's exponentially more if you're going to be attending a four-year institution. And then it goes up from 32 and above. So we do uh, advise you to think about this when you're considering your higher education. It's a difference between graduating with or without debt. Next slide. And for those of you who we hope we'll see in the fall, um, we do invite you to attend our open house. That's going to be on April 18th. We're hoping to have it in person um, and hopefully COVID restrictions will not um, bar us from doing so. But if we do, um, please do try to visit us on April 18th. And we hope you connect with us in social media. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Brookdale Community College. Please don't forget to use the Q&A if you have any questions for them. Next, we have Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Thank you so much. It should be popping up here any second here. And then I will share my slide. My name is Jennifer Yeager. I'm one of the assistant directors um, of undergraduate missions here at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Let me just uh, get my screen up here. Sorry guys, I'm having technical difficulties today. Mm -hmm. oh, let's see. I apologize. I'll just start talking so I can catch up. So again, I'm Jennifer Yeager here from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Um, we are actually going to um, talk about how our, here I am, how our education is special and what an education at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute means. So if you look, if I can get my screen up here. Um, a Rensselaer education, we are located here in Troy, New York, which is in upstate New York. Um, we are right outside of Albany, New York, which is the state capital. 
Troy itself is a small city of about 50,000 people. And our students really do get to take advantage of the fact that we have about 13 or 14 colleges represented um, in our area. So there's lots for students to do in these college towns. And let's see. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, also, we are a mid-size polytechnic institute. So we are regarded for our research. Um, students can start research as early as second semester of their freshman year. And it's a very um, organic process. Students are able to uh, participate in research um, and they can get into projects without going through a large uh, application um, process. Um, and we're very proud of that here at Rensselaer. Um, the other thing to remember is students are not going to be uh, siloed within their discipline disciplines. So we are a polytechnic school. Uh, but with that being said, we do represent five different schools. Um, and we like to say there are low walls between the schools. We have the School of Architecture, School of Science, the Lally School of Management, the School of Engineering, and then the Haas or Human School of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences. All students, regardless of their major, will take 24 credits in Haas. So we like to show that students who are engineers or students that are involved in biology will have those opportunities to take different classes across the curriculum and across those different schools. Um, a Rensselaer education really does spur um, intellectual agility. Um, there's lots of multicultural um, opportunities for our students. And we like to say that our students will get a global view and be able to solve uh, complex global challenges in the world today as a polytech school. I did say we are a mid-sized research university. Um, more than $100 million a year goes to research just at the undergraduate level. Um, we have more than 900 of our students participating in undergraduate research. And there are lots of different research thrusts here at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Students can look at things like biotechnology with life sciences, lots of studies done with media, arts, and technology, um, and also studies in nanotechnology and advanced materials. Something that's very unique to a Rensselaer education is the arts semester. So this is the way that our students are able to take advantage of study abroad, research, doing community service and philanthropy, or even startups in a company, um, along with internships and co-ops. So what happens is our sophomores will come back to campus and take a full semester of classes that summer before their junior year. What this is going to do is it's gonna open up a full semester junior year, either the fall semester or the spring semester junior year will be the away semester. That's the opportunity for students to do their internships and co-ops and travel abroad experiences, whatever is going to benefit that student in their career. So we hadn't even talked about student life yet and I'm constantly amazed at how our students are so very involved and we are a school that represents really rigorous programs as well. But somehow our students are able to participate in 212 plus clubs and organizations. Um, and also we do have our 23 varsity sports teams, intramural teams and club sports teams. Um, with the clubs and organizations, we're a multicultural campus. So students are able to participate in Greek life, professional organizations, community service, and really, no matter what organization it is, we do really have a thrust for philanthropy and students helping the city of Troy um, and in the US. So that's really nice and highly regarded here at Rensselaer. Uh, sports wise, we have 23 varsity teams. Um, out of those, we are D3 across the board. Um, we also have division one ice hockey. That's both for men's ice hockey and women's ice hockey. So those ice hockey games are really our school spirit event that our students like to bond and get together and um, have fun at. As far as application options, our students can apply using Common App, Coalition App, or Candidate's Choice. There's no uh, given preference to any one of those application types. Financial aid, very important. Just remember that for any need-based aid, we do require the FAFSA. 
and also the CSS profile that takes a deeper dive into the finances. And then definitely follow us on our very um, active social media. Um, at RPI Admissions is our Instagram. We have takeovers about every single day from different faculty and student interactions and co-ops and internships. And not listed here, we also have our new custom view book. Definitely check it out because you can customize it for whatever programs and extracurriculars you wish. Thanks, sorry for the technical difficulties and put your uh, questions into the chat box. We're happy to help, thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Next up, we have University of South Florida. And again, we have um, University of South Florida. If you could stop sharing mm -hmm. your screen, Jennifer. Thank you so sure. much. All right, let me. If you have any uh, questions, please, for Rensselaer, please put it down in the Q&A down at the bottom. All right, thank you. Alrighty, good evening everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the University of South Florida. So just to introduce myself, my name is Christy Pugh. I'm the Regional Recruiter Advisor for the state of New Jersey, and I also um, cover territories in New York, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. So talking about USF, we are one university geographically distributed. So when I say the University of South Florida, I'm referring to all three of our campuses, um, but all of our campuses are located in the greater Tampa Bay area of Florida. Um, we have a total enrollment of over 50,000 students, 37,000 of which are undergraduate students. So we are a relatively large public research institution. Um, but though we are large, we maintain an average class size of around 33 students. So that's similar to what you see in high school. USF does pride itself on our diversity with 41.5% of our students coming from diverse backgrounds. And we do have students from all 50 states and 141 different countries. Of those 50 states, our biggest out of state market is actually New Jersey. So we do see a lot of students from New Jersey coming down to USF for classes. And we do have over 200 majors and concentrations, which means odds are whatever major you are interested in, we probably have it at USF. We are America's fastest rising university. We are now ranked number 46 by US News and World Report, and we are very uh, proud of this number. If you look at the rankings and what they were 10 years ago, we were ranked at around 100. So the fact that we've been able to jump up to 46 in the last 10 years um, is very impressive, and we are very proud of that. As I mentioned, USF is one university geographic, geographically distributed um, with our three campuses located in Tampa, St. Petersburg, and Sarasota Manatee. Each campus offers something a little bit different, a little bit unique. It kind of really just depends on what you're looking for in your college experience. Um, and you can kind of pay, base your um, campus off of that. Tampa is gonna be the biggest of the three. When you think large public institution, that's our Tampa campus. Uh, St. Petersburg is where city meets sand. Um, it's located really close to Clearwater Beach. It's a little bit of a smaller campus. If you really like the outdoors, I'd recommend that one. And St. Sarasota Manatee is our smallest of the three. It only has a couple thousand students and it maintains a 13 to one student to faculty ratio. So kind of where big ideas start small. There we go. Um, so an overview on student life and our academics. We do have over 700 student organizations. This ranges from Greek life to academic clubs. So definitely something for everyone to get involved in. And we do have over a thousand on-campus events throughout the year. So that could range from our bull market, our week of welcome. Um, that's what that picture is in the bottom left there. That's the week of welcome that happens at the beginning of each semester. Um, we are an NCAA Division I athletics. We actually share a football stadium with the Tampa uh, Bay Buccaneers. So that's actually the stadium where the Super Bowl is happening this weekend. That's where we also play our USF football games. And athletic events are free for students to attend. So um, if you want to go to a football game, basketball game, swim and dive meet, that is free for students. Um, as far as our academics are concerned, we do have over 200 majors and concentrations, um, and we do also are really big on research. So students are allowed to 
um, start their research as soon as their second semester of freshman year. So if you are interested in research, that's definitely something to take advantage of while on campus. Um, we do have our honors college as well as our study abroad opportunities. Um, you can study abroad with any major on our campus. Um, our office is really good at finding an opportunity that works for you and your schedule. So kind of switching gears now, we're gonna talk about the freshman admission information in regards to the application. Um, so our application is very straightforward. You can apply on the Common App, the Coalition App, or the USF Admissions website. It does not matter which one you choose, just whatever is easiest for you. Um, and we do have, our application just requires the $30 application fee, your official high school transcript, and your official ACT or SAT test scores. That's it. Um, our application is based strictly on academic credentials, so we don't need any supplemental information there. Once you submit the test scores and your high school transcript, you are good to go. And cost of attendance. So this is something that's definitely important to consider, especially if you're looking at out-of-state institutions. Um, if you look at that non-resident line, that's where you guys would be coming from New Jersey. Um, and if you include tuition and fees, housing and meals, books and supplies, and others, that's going to run you at around $34,000 for the academic year. And yes, that is a large amount of money. But when you compare that to other out of state public institutions, that number is incredibly low. Um, we have very competitive tuition rates for both our in state and our out of state students. So definitely just consider that when you're looking at schools. But one of the ways in which you could offset that tuition cost is going to be through scholarships. Um, our scholarships are merit based. So as long as you have the GPA, you have the test score and you've applied by the deadline, you're automatically going to get that scholarship that's associated with those uh, score and that GPA. So kind of wrapping up, these are our um, dates and deadlines to remember. These stay the same each and every year. Our application opens on July 1, and you need to complete that by January 1. That's our priority deadline. But you do have until February 15th. That's our scholarship application deadline. So if you don't meet January 1, please just be sure to apply by February 15th. And then May 1 is our admission deposit deadline. So that's the last day for you guys to tell us if you want to be a part of this Bulls family. So that's kind of everything I wanted to talk to you guys about today. If you have any question, this is my contact information. And also just feel free to put it in the chat. I'd be more than happy to answer it for you guys. So thank you and go Bulls. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. Again, if you have any questions for University of South Florida, please put it in the Q&A down at the bottom. Up next, we have Vermont Technical College. Oh, Savannah, you are still muted. Thanks. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. All right. Hey, everybody. Um, so this is my contact information. I'm Savannah Simons, one of the assistant directors of admissions at Vermont Technical College, and I'll get right to it. Um, so Vermont Technical College it has two main campuses, the Randolph Center campus and the Williston campus. If you've never been to Vermont, I would highly suggest coming soon when restrictions have ended. It is an absolutely gorgeous state. Um, right now we are having some great snow. It's wonderful. Um, the Randolph Center campus is our original campus. It's got more of a, that traditional classic college feel. Um, it's a rural, uh, rural community, um, about 500 acres, and there's about 800 students who live on that campus. Um, there's a dining hall there, um, and, a, and that's where our sports complex is as well. Um, We've also have a ski hill with um, a rope toe and a build your own ski lab there. Um, clubs, intramurals and varsity athletics run out of that campus. Our Williston campus is a little bit to the north um, near that um, airplane logo up there near Burlington, Vermont. Um, it's an urban setting um, very close to Lake Champlain. Um, it's residential and commuter students and a little bit more of a tight knit campus. Um, I think there are about 400 students there. Um, there are clubs and intramural sports at that campus as well. You'll also notice some of the like uh, other green dots that are major cities around Vermont. Um, those are our distant sites for nursing. Um, so um, only nursing students will apply to those campuses. So um, we do at Vermont Tech, we, what we want to do is set you up for success. We know that college is just um, one stop on your journey and we want to help get you ready for the rest um, 
the rest of your career. So our programs are career focused, um, they're hands on and employers in Vermont and um, nationally as well tend to love our grads um, because they do have that hands on experience um, in their field. Um, we historically have a 99% placement rate, um, which means that after graduation, 99% of our graduates will find jobs in their field um, or go on to higher education. Um, we, our employers include IBM, JetBlue, um, the city of Boston, actually the um, main city of Boston, like um, groundskeeper is one of our graduates and he manages the entire um, beautification of Boston, which is a lot of work for sure. Um, so I mentioned um, that we get people into careers within their majors. Now we have four main schools. Now the first is the School of Engineering and Computing. Um, we offer two year degrees, four year degrees and a master's degree in this school. Um, I like this college a lot because you can build on um, the different degrees. So you can go for two associate's degrees um, and end up with a four year degree. Um, then we have the nursing of uh, the School of Nursing and Health Professions. This is probably our largest um, by far, just because it has the most people in it. Um, that is where you'll find um, dental hygiene, nursing, respiratory therapy, radiologic science, that sort of thing. Um, then there's the School of Professional Studies and Management for Business, um, professional uh, pilot technology, if you want to learn how to become an um, airline pilot. Um, construction management and diesel and auto are also in here as well. You'll notice these are two year and four year degrees as well. Um, and then finally, our School of Agriculture and Plant Sciences um, has two year and four year degrees um, um, that are hosted on our farm um, in Randolph Center campus. Um, you can visit vtc.edu slash majors to visit um, to explore the full list of programs. Um, so we do have a, um, a pretty small student body, in case you couldn't tell already, we do have total enrollment of about 1600 students statewide. Um, our average class size is about 15. Um, we do want to keep those um, class sizes small so that we can continue to give folks um, that hands on personal experience that uh, we are known for. Um, the uh, average student to teacher ratio is also pretty low as well, about 15 to 1. Um, varsity athletics. So we are affiliated with the Yankee Small College Conference and the United States Collegiate Athletic Association. Um, we have men's and women's soccer, men's and women's basketball, cross country, track and field, and esports as well. Um, that was started out as just a club, but now we're actually moving to varsity, which is wonderful. Um, tuition and scholarships. Because we are a state college, we can keep tuition pretty low. Um, it's, um, we have one of the lowest tuition rates for out-of-state students, um, and we do special scholarships for high achieving out-of-state students. Um, you can visit vtc.edu slash tuition to learn more about those, um, as they can get pretty specific to whatever major you are interested in. Um, so I can't give too much um, specific advice on those right now. Um, we do accept military benefits and third-party scholarships as well, of course. Um, and so programs do have special tuition rates, including the dental hygiene and the pilot programs. Um, we are on the Common app and we do also have our own in-house Vermont Tech app. Um, you can use either one, no preference, of course. Um, we have gone test optional for this year for most majors. Um, we do recognize how tough it is to you know, get out there and get test, um, testing right now, um, especially since a lot of them have been canceled. Um, rolling admissions for most of our programs um, for uh, nursing, dental hygiene, radiologic science, and veterinary technology. We did have a December 1st deadline. Um, so those classes are, or excuse me, those programs are on a waiting list at this point, but we definitely still um, encourage you to apply. Um, and um, you can follow us on social media. We have um, a couple open houses coming up February 9th and 11th. You can visit us there to check those out. And that is my cue. I am all done. <laughs> Thank you so much, Savannah. Really Sorry. appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, next we have Harrisburg University. And please, if you do have any questions for Savannah at Vermont Technical College, put it down in the Q&A. Harrisburg University, you are up. Perfect. Hello, everyone. My name is Jenna Stevenson. I'm calling from Harrisburg University. Uh, we are a science and technology school. Uh, everything is going to be based off of science and technology. No liberal arts, no performing arts, no creative arts, or anything like that. So very niche. Um, sorry. 
I apologize for that, just a couple of technical difficulties, but a little bit about Harrisburg. I'm going to kind of be all over the place just because my presentation is for a normal uh, time presentation in a classroom. So I'll try to be as, uh, I'll try to make this as easy and smooth as possible to follow. But where are we? Well, we are about, I want to say three or four hours west of Middlesex County, New Jersey. We are located in central Pennsylvania, uh, Harrisburg. PA is the state capital. We are located right next to the state capital itself. So politicians are typically coming in and out of our buildings and using our facilities uh, just because we do have a lot of new um, equipment, new, a pretty new building. Everything is pretty, um, pretty new to begin with. <laughs> We have one building totally dedica dedicated to the academics, 14 stories high. We are currently in the middle of building an additional building to our campus, as well as housing students in four different buildings. Everything is within a four block radius of the city. The city is big, is, is a city just like Philadelphia, however, not nearly as big. Um, so I do like to make sure I do tell people that Philadelphia is kind of like that city that's surrounded by some suburbs, suburbs, and some more suburbs, whereas Harrisburg is a city surrounded more by a rural area. I mentioned Philadelphia a lot because I am the admissions rep for Philadelphia and South Jersey. So I can often talk about and relate things mostly to Philadelphia. And we also have a Philadelphia campus, but more commuter based. So not maybe a little bit too far for students to come to our campus from Middlesex uh, every day. A little bit about our programs is that we do have 11 different majors with over 30 different concentrations. Again, everything is gonna be very much based on technology and science. Uh, just some big ones, computer and information sciences is probably our most popular major. It is going to be based more on the software side. So coding, hacking, uh, programming, cybersecurity, software engineering, anything like that. And then our interactive media, which has purposeful game design, that is also another big one. Both of those are offered at the Harrisburg and the Philly locations. Our newest program that we do have is eSports Management. That is exactly what it sounds like. eSports has become a very lucrative business for the past couple of years. We are a huge eSports school, so I do like to make sure we do mention that. As far as management itself, it has everything to do with the eSports business. So the, the teams, the tournaments, the, the marketing, everything. So this slide just shows a couple of the places our students have worked or completed internships at. We do require every single student to complete some kind of internship prior to graduation. It is 135 credit hours. Typically what you, uh, sometimes they are paid for, sometimes they are not paid for. It really just depends on what capacity you do get into that internship at. We do have a 91% placement rating, so within Six months after graduation, 91% of our graduates do get into a job in their field or they go off and get their grad degree. So housing, like I mentioned earlier, the Philly campus does not have any housing. However, our Harrisburg campus has all apartment style dorms. Everything has a fully functioning kitchen, bathroom, bedroom space, and living space. We have fully functioning kitchens because we do not have any cafeterias on campus. I do like to make sure that we mention that. Students are living with with anywhere from one other person up to five other people. If you have a two-person apartment, it looks very similar to what you see in front of you and students will sacrifice that living space for an extra bedroom space. If you live with five other students, you have three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and then that common kitchen living and dining space. So we don't have any NCAA sports at this time. However, we do have tons of student-run, student-based clubs and activities. Whatever we don't have as a major, we will probably have as some kind of activity. Like I mentioned earlier, we're a huge esports team. We are currently the 2019 and 2020 Overwatch national champions. We do provide full athletic scholarships to students who do, uh, who do get recruited onto our team or to make the team in spring tryouts. We currently only play League of Legends and Overwatch. Um, and we do have a club team as well that plays more mainstream games. 
So a big thing that I like to make sure I mention is that we are a huge diverse school. We're not a huge school, but we have a huge diversity um, population. We are 60% minority, having students coming from over 100 different countries. We are also 44% female. Having that many women in STEM is a huge breakthrough, and we love to brag about that. So as far as our school, I love to always make sure that I do bring up our scholarships. Our scholarships is bring, uh, brings in a lot of students. Every single student who gets who gets into our school will get some kind of scholarship, which is merit-based. They range from 11,000 a year up to 16,000 a year. Our tuition for in and out of state students is going to be 23,900 a year. With housing, you're looking at about 30,000 a year in costs. So even if you get that $11,000 scholarship, it does cut your tuition cost in half and then whatever financial aid you might qualify for as well as third-party scholarships. If you graduate with a higher GPA than you initially applied at, we will honor your uh, scholarship as long as you move into a higher, sorry about that, that was my timer, <laughs> into a higher bracket. As far as class sizes, we do have 25 to 30 students. Pardon, and I, I hate to cut you off. No, but that's perfectly <laughs> fine. <laughs> if you have a, a quick second, one last thing, if you wanted to, to say something, go ahead. Uh, no problem. So our admissions process is extremely easy. We're typically looking for a 2.7, 2.75 GPA or higher. We do not require SATs or ACTs. And then our, uh, you can just have your guidance counselor send us your transcripts. That's it. Our application is free. Awesome. Thank you so much, Perfect. Jordan. Thank you. Thank you. If you have any questions for Jordan with Harrisburg University, please put it down in the Q&A. Uh, next up, last but not least, we have Bloomfield College. Thank you so much for the introduction. Um, so just a little bit about me. So my name's Taylor. I'm an admissions counselor from Bloomfield and I'm also an EOF liaison as well. So I work very closely with the EOF program as well. Um, I typically recruit students from Union County all the way down to Cape May um, and kind of like the Nike symbol of New Jersey. So a little bit on the West Coast as well. Um, so Bloomfield, we are a small private institution located in Bloomfield, New Jersey. So when I say that we're small, we only have 1,700 students in total. Um, we are New Jersey's only four-year predominantly Black institution, Hispanic-serving institution, and minority-serving institution. Um, so about 64% of our students identify as African-American, and about 24% of our students identify as Hispanic. Uh, we, we are ranked in the state of New Jersey as um, the number one institution institution for helping students move forward socioeconomically. So what that means is we're taking students that come from maybe low middle class backgrounds and we're helping them go into upper class and middle class um, socioeconomic status once they graduate. We're ranked 14th in the country as being one of the most diverse national liberal arts colleges um, in the country. Uh, this is just kind of an overview of the majors that we offer. So we have business, education, um, nursing, biology, um, but our top majors here at Bloomfield um, are definitely our game design program. Our game design program is ranked number one in the state of New Jersey um, and within our creative arts and technology department. None of those majors require portfolio in order to um, be accepted into the program. So what that means is you really just have to meet the general admissions requirements for Bloomfield. Our minimum GPA requirement is a 2.5 GPA or higher. We're SAT, ACT optional, so we do not require test scores at all. Um, even before COVID, we were test optional. Um, and then also nursing is one of our top majors for us as well. Our nursing program works a little bit differently from other schools. So we're what's considered a non-direct entry. So what that means is we don't have a GPA or SAT requirement because we don't accept any students into the nursing program based off of their high school GPA. So what that means is if you, if you apply to Bloomfield and you're accepted based off of the general requirements, you would be undeclared with an interest in nursing so that you can take the prerequisites for nursing your freshman year. The prerequisites are English, math. We don't have developmental English or math, so you'll go straight into a college level English or math. Anatomy one and two, a nutrition class, and maybe a few other um, you know, prerequisites for the program. And then once you complete the end of your freshman year, as long as you have a 2.75 GPA or higher, and you test in the 50th percentile or higher for the TEAS exam, then you would be considered for the nursing program. So even though you're technically starting the nursing program a year later from a non um, a direct entry nursing program, 
you still have the opportunity to graduate in four years because you'll start your nursing classes in the fall of your sophomore year and you'll start clinicals in the spring of your sophomore year. So it gives students, you know, the opportunity to kind of see if nursing is for them. Maybe they've never taken anatomy and they start to take it and, you know, it's not for them. Um, so it gives them the opportunity to kind of transfer out of the nursing program without being in the nursing program. Our students are extremely active on campus. Uh, we are D2, so there is the possibility of being recruited on campus. Um, so we have uh, baseball, basketball, soccer, cross country, track and field. We also have esports. Esports is brand new for us. We just started it last year. Um, right now, all we have is a team for League of Legends, um, but we're trying to, you know, kind of broaden that as we go through um, all of the requirements for it. So a little bit about the admissions process. So we are on the Common App and our online application. The um, application fee is $40. But we do have a uh, fee waiver code for our online application only. Um, that fee waiver code, it's in all capital letters, BCVIP. So Bloomfield College, a very important person. Like I said, you would have to submit the application, your transcript, two letters of recommendation, your essay, and we are SAT, ACT optional. Our minimum GPA requirement is a 2.5 GPA or higher. But if you do fall below that GPA requirement, still apply to Bloomfields because there's the opportunity to be referred to one of our other programs. Um, so we do have our uh, EOF program, which stands for Educational Opportunity Fund. Um, it really is a big support system for our students. I was an EOF alumni. I went through the program um, and I think that it's absolutely fantastic. So that is a separate application from our online application. Um, once you submit the application, you would meet with EOF and you would have your interview. So they would tell you exactly what documents that you would need um, because you do have to financially qualify for the program. Um, so even if you are accepted into Bloomfield and you would like to go through the EOF program, you can do that as well. Again, it's still just a general um, admissions requirement for Bloomfield. But then if you fall below, we can either refer you to EOF or our Summer Leap program. Our Summer Leap program is very similar to our EOF program. Um, it's just not a whole nother interview process. Um, our Summer Leap program is for students that do fall below the GPA requirement. And I kind of um, say that it's like uh, intro to college course almost. Um, so it basically helps you with learning college and understanding the college process. Um, so you'll take English and math, and at the end of the three weeks, you become a Bloomfield College student. I'll try to squeeze in financial aid real quick. Um, so we are the lowest tuition for a four-year private school in the state of New Jersey. So without housing, we're 30000 and with housing, we're about forty two. dollars um, So yeah, that's Bloomfield College in a nutshell. <laughs> Thank you so much, Taylor. And uh, we do have a minute or two. So if you quickly have a question for Bloomfield College, please put it in the Q&A right this second. Again, we have just another minute. So I did wanna make sure that we are uh, good to go. Now, super quickly, um, I did want to share my screen uh, so we all know, uh, you know what to do in this case. But again, I just wanted to make sure I uh, thank you all so much for coming today. Um, this session is recorded, so in about a week or so, you will definitely be, have access uh, and it will be available again in about a week. Sign up for more sessions. There are more sessions that are available. Um, and then also afterwards, uh, once I'm done uh, with this webinar, once I click out of it and everyone is good to go, uh, you will get a quick four question uh, survey that will appear. So please help us out and fill out that survey. Uh, other than that, thank you all so much, uh, everybody from all the colleges and universities for coming and thank you so much for our attendees as well. Have a great night. Thank you. Bye bye.